Welcome back, everyone. Desert Gold here after an exciting time in the desert. Um, kind of an interesting situation. Um, just kind of want to summarize uh, the events that occurred today. Um, unusual circumstances led up to um, the short videos that we had today. Um, we were actually out driving around and heading up into the desert uh, to look around, see some things, and uh, got up uh, quite a ways out of the city and uh, had an oil line break in our truck. And we we're stuck out in the middle of nowhere. Um, nothing to do. I've got some guns in the car. Um, decided uh, while we're waiting for the tow truck, I thought I'd uh, uh, make use of some time. Um, in the first video, I showed you a slam fire situation, and that is a very, very dangerous and um, deadly situation in some cases. Um, you want to pay close attention to when those occur and try to get to the bottom of them as quickly as possible. I uh, mentioned them in my Kasul loading um, video. It's kind of ironic that the very next day I take those same rounds out and I have that exact situation happen. Anyway, this is the weapon. Um, it uh, had three rounds in it um, when I was shooting the video. All three have been uh, discharged. Um, I have not opened the weapon since then. I thought I'd do that on camera right now. Um, please excuse me for any lack of safety concerns, but I know for a fact that all rounds have been discharged in this weapon. So, we're going to open the weapon up, and those are the three fired rounds. Now, there's a number of reasons that a weapon will uh, slam fire. Um, most of them will center around the firing pin, uh, the trigger mechanism. A lot of them will center around uh, primer seating. Um, also, uh, like I said, uh, the total cartridge length uh, after your final um, preparation of the round will impact how it sits in the chamber. Now, first off, I want to check and make sure that uh, the rounds were not overcharged. Uh, a first um, observation that I always make is how hard the cases are to eject, and they slide right out. Now, why is that important? Well, if you overcharge a case, the brass, like I said, will expand in a number of different directions, a lot of which will be out in circumference. If when you are um, ejecting your spent cases and you have uh, severe um, or restricted um, tension in getting the cases out, then that's a good indication that your cases have uh, expanded and you want to pay close attention to that. These are in perfect uh, after-fire condition. You can see um, actually there's no uh, flattening of the primer. Uh, the lighting, I can't get that that for you, but take it for, there is no flattened primer. Brass looks pretty much like it was when I loaded it. There's no splitting, no unusual belling of the brass. So we did not experience any unusual pressures on these rounds. There's another one. Came right out. Again, no flattened primer. I don't know if I can get that on camera. Case, no splitting. No belling, nothing. 
So we know our load is, although it is a hot load, um, oops, it, uh, it isn't exceeding the limits or the um, safety areas of this weapon. Um, so thinking back I have to figure out what's different. I've been using this load for a little while so the powder is the same, the, the grains are the same, the bullet is the same. Why did we have a slam fire today? What changes did I make? Well the one change I did make is the primer. I normally use CCI small rifle primers. Um, the store I go to was out of those. The only ones that they had in stock was a uh, federal small rifle primer. And I'm not saying anything negative about federal. I'm just saying that is the only difference that I've uh, made in this load. Um, so what I'm going to do is obviously uh, continue to evaluate the remaining uh, cartridges that I did put together last night, um, evaluate the potential for that particular uh, primer to um, have issues in this caliber or this um, pressure range with this kind of uh, firearm. As far as uh, why this was such a dangerous event was the fact that, um, as you know, the firing round would be in the top position. So that would be exiting the barrel. The slam fire was the next round in to be chambered. So the only place for that to exit would have been out there. And as you can see, it is not a complete exit orifice for that uh, round to exit. That's what makes these so deadly and so dangerous. And that's why they demand your attention at all times. Now moving on to the second uh, little test I did today. Um, had uh, uh, occasion a while back to purchase some uh, Grizzly Extremes. I don't know if you've seen them on the internet or if you've seen them on YouTube. Uh, the picture on the cover denotes what these rounds are supposed to look like when they are fired. And there's a couple of uh, YouTube videos where they are firing into water and yes you will get this is the 45 right there and if you can I don't know if I can get proper lighting on it but the uh, bullet head is separated into four petals all the way down the length of the bullet deep deep uh, center core these are all brass, so there's no lead in the middle. It's just a very deep core in there. Um, same with the 9mm we shot today. Uh, all brass, deep core, four petals separated all the way down. Um, this is the jug that, uh, the fourth jug that I pulled the bullet out of that we shot today. This is the actual bullet right there. Um, as you can see, I was surprised that it made it all the way into the fourth jug um, in the video and it in the back of my mind indicated a failure to expand. And as you can see, we did have a failure to expand. There's almost no expansion on any of the petals. Um, the cavity is filled with quite a bit of the uh, wet pack paper uh, to the extent that it's even coming out the sides of the slits here on the side of the bullet. 
but that being said, no expansion. Yeah, I don't know if, um, the, like I said in the video, the this is the nine millimeter. We shot 110 grain at a velocity of uh, 1350 feet per second. Uh, the 45 is listed as a plus P, 175 grains at uh, 1,200 feet per second. Uh, I lent my chronograph to a friend and it came back non-functional, so when it is back online again, I'm going to take these out and do a more extensive uh, evaluation of these. Um, I am intrigued by the large expansion of this, but at the same time, if, if it's not going to open up like it's supposed to, then it uh, fails in its purpose. Anyway, I um, thought I'd just summarize my day in the desert. Uh, hope to uh, get out there under more controlled situations and uh, put together more informative type uh, videos for you. This is Desert Gold out. You have a good day.